Um, just hit record now. Just yep. Three, two, one. Welcome to episode 544 of This Week in League. I'm Nate. And I'm not Jay, but I am Glenn. And I'm Jay. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Jay, oh. pedophile. It's his time. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Look, I mean, now I have to listen back to last week's and see what the fuck you said. <laughs> it's, it's generally f- someone, makes its way into snitch- his uh, his vocab. Someone snitch on this Dylan Edwards looking cunt and let me know if he called me a pedophile last week when I was there at the start of the show. <laughs> so your stepdad apparently is at a, a basketball function. Yep, slash up yeah. in bed and forgot that it was Wednesday. <laughs> I tell you, this this long weekend thing did has fucked me over. Like I did, it, it has fucked me out of like a day this week. You know, where I just sort of feel out of sync. Um, but yeah, look, I didn't get to talk to you. I didn't get the start of the show last week, so I didn't get the 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 uh, the Toowoomba C grade touch fix. And like I've been shaking all week, and I was on it what it was, and I thought it might have been the fucking the fact that I haven't had heroin in a little while. But it turns out it's part of it. It's part of it. Yeah. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out I've been, fucking, I've been I've been I've been rigorous with my I've been rigorous with my with my heroin dosage. Okay, um, but what I didn't get was my Artumba C grade <laughs> touch <laughs> fix from last week. Uh, well, so. We are in a bit of a lull. We were supposed to go back to training tonight, and uh, as we drove into the car park, although we kind of anticipated that training was going to be called off as we were driving, but we're diligent motherfuckers, Jackson and I. So uh, we were driving to training. Um, so why so why was training going to be called off? Did, did you think? Because it was pissing with rain. Oh, okay. Mountain um, and and the uh, the word came out as we drove into the car park, <laughs> so we turned around and went home. So uh, I wasn't going to train because, uh, as I was saying to my uh, illustrious colleague off air. I have. You got, you got diabetes and had to get your foot amputated <laughs> through the week. Oh, fucking got foot aids. <laughs> I don't really know what the fuck's going on, but I've got a weird infection in my foot, which has caused it to swell up to about the size of my head. Yes, that big. And I can hardly fucking walk. And yeah, it's, it's, I wasn't de- definitely wasn't going to be training, but I was accompanying my son, who was about to have his first um, session training session for A grade for the season. And... Um, yeah, quick, cl- quick clarify and say you got you 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 got like a, a massive cut on your foot. Well, it's not really a cut. You got broken it, bones in your foot. Oh, possibly. I I thought that I'd broken my foot, but yeah. But as it turns out, you got your you you look your you little foot is a little bit sore, is it? The doctor. You think you think, you think that that kind of you think that kind of Joshua's the fucking esque attitude is going to endure you <laughs> to the C grade touch side. I will tell you what, that my the toe next to my big toe has got that red and covered in blisters. There was a there was a time where I thought it was my dick, and I thought my eyesight was playing up. <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck's wrong with my eyes? <laughs> What's my dick doing down there?" <laughs> yeah, last time I jerked myself off with my toes, but in between my toes, I accidentally ripped it off. <laughs> fuck. I do a lot of yoga, but fuck, I ain't that flexible just yet. Um, yeah, so a little bit of a lull for a um, uh, for the time being until next. Well, apparently there's They're a training out. session Season Monday. Injury. No, please come on. I'm uh, I'm in the hyperbaric chamber. I'm on some fairly aggressive antibiotics, and uh, they're apparently rescheduling the session to Sunday afternoon. So, right. So that's hopefully I'll be there. Turn it around, and recover. Exactly. Get the Rambo uh, knife but, out and put it in the fucking fire. <laughs> I'll put it on the, on the, on the stove top and get it so it's glowing red hot. Yeah. And just like fucking lance. Apparently, it uh, if pour gunpowder uh, in there. And- if the doctor doesn't think it's improving to the degree that he would like to see when I go back to him tomorrow afternoon. He's going to send me to a fucking surgeon who's going to apparently fucking cut into my toe and... Uh, just lance out all the goodness. Just Yeah. Oh, I'm not looking That's forward fucking... to that. And, uh, you know, for, for our listeners who like to, to consume this show as they consume their breakfast on Thursday morning, yeah. welcome. Fucking... <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. What well, you having your morning? Your morning fucking chico roll. Just, think. <laughs> <laughs> just chowing down on a nice hearty bowl of Kellogg's toe flakes. <laughs> oh, it's uh, a life. Creamy, creamy. Uh, but yeah, so you didn't actually get the recap that Leo 
obviously won his grand final the week prior, and yeah, so it was um, very good. Yeah, champion. Very good. First, first, uh, most successful touch player in the family. <laughs> Played at the highest level too, just quietly. Well, you know, just saying. His uh, his brother doesn't love just it saying, when yeah, I say yeah, that. His dad shit. <laughs> yeah, no, no, his dad. I can deal with it. He, you're right. He is. But uh, his so brother. Jackson, so Jackson, Jackson can't handle the fact that he's got a little medal or a trophy that he doesn't, doesn't have in the, in that sport. Correct. Does not like. Really. He does not like me saying that Leo is most successful, and ergo best touch player in the family. Look, he's had a pretty fucking good run though, Jackson. He's had a great <laughs> fucking run. So it's 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 actually quite funny to see the shoe on the other foot because it's been it's been one way traffic him shitting on you pretty much. Yeah, yeah. So now yeah, the how turns table. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That kid, he's he's really got a fucking problem. Yep, I've created a monster. Right now. Uh, we briefly spoke for like all of about 23 seconds at the start of the show, uh, conveying how fucking exhausted both of us are. And there's, there is no, there is no news, right? Like, I can't remember anything. I haven't really been consuming a lot of like outside, like, like 360 bullshit. Yeah. Um, so look, I may have missed, I may have missed something. I mean, are we, are we doing racisms on Latrell again this week or has he got the week off? <laughs> uh, well, they're not coming after the Tigers, and the Bunnies won on the weekend, so I don't know who the who the next target in line is. Oh, he um, did have that thing. He did have that thing where he fucking tried to pull out of a fucking heavy contact as a yeah. you know, went to score a try, and somehow that became um, his fault. Yes, deliberately trying to fucking put put like you know one of his best mates out and not looking at him at the time and turning away from the contact. Look, the man is <laughs> talented. Turning... He's a talented yeah. man. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, look. Even the when it was, NRL three hundred and sixty came on after the Tigers game on Monday, and so I I didn't actually turn it off immediately, which I fucking in hindsight I really should have. But you know they were probably having a crack at you know what what's the, the Bulldogs halves crisis and um and maybe uh, you know that's, South, that's, that's just fucking history, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> And um, really, the fact that, you know, Seas might have won, but they're still a long way off the pace. So that was pretty yeah. much, which is you know, probably, certainly with regards to Seas, I, I would tend to agree with that sentiment. But um, you, you can't hate on them for fucking, albeit it was the dogs, but they fucking needed a win and they got one. Look, look we'll, we'll fucking get to it. It's the second game of the round. So let's just go we'll go, to, go to the first one then. Thursday let's. night, the Panthers 22 to feed the rest of 16. And uh, what did you make of this one? Look, I'd fuck all notes. I'd fuck all notes on this game because I figured um, old mate would waffle yeah, on and fucking jerk carry on, and I could, yeah. and I could just fucking zone out. Well, we can try. We can try. We can try. Like minutes. Approx- we can just try and approximate. Like, uh, like you know, like the, the, roosters, <laughs> the, the, roosters, the roosters were kind. The roosters were kind of just like they were there, but it didn't matter who was there. Because I mean, the, the Panthers decide if you know, they're going to win or if they're going to lose. Like it's just like if they decide that they're going to win by a lot, then they'll win by a lot. But if they don't, then like you know, please stop. Yeah. Please, <laughs> you know, <laughs> please. I thought I was going to have a night off of this, <laughs> <laughs> and you were perpetuating it so yeah. well. It's I, like he's here. There's now the, the beautiful thing about uh, about Nathan Cleary being out the, at the minute is that again um, is that. It can be played a number of ways, and every fan base can enjoy themselves while doing so. The Panthers can go, oh, we didn't have Nathan Cleary, and we still won. Aren't we fucking amazing? The real people who actually watch rugby league can also, they could also have their fun and say, well, yeah, the Panthers didn't miss a beat without Nathan Cleary being there, ergo, the the system works, ergo, he's a system halfback. That's and kind of offers nothing. That's exactly the point I wanted to make because I feel like the Roosters would well and truly have fancied themselves given how they've started the season um, and the fact that Penrith had Cleary out. And I think many teams, when they come up against Penrith without Cleary, unless it's the Tigers who just have a habit of beating Penrith when Cleary plays, most most you know obviously like the last time they played them so mm. i think when teams play penrith without cleary they fancy themselves but like it or not and and it's it is a bit of a meme worthy comment but 
they really are playing a system, not a team without a superstar player. And hmm. Cleary, oh, I don't think it's a slight on the bloke to say that he primarily is a system halfback and that system is probably the best we've ever seen. He puts his own flavour on things as well along the way, but I, I don't think that's a slight on him. It can be, though, if you try hard enough. Yeah, you have a way <laughs> of slighting everyone oh, wherever boy, you I go you. and whatever you do. That's what I did, you do. I don't know if you still go on the site that we call X, formerly known as Twitter, but I did rustle the fucking jimmies of several people, hundred <laughs> people. Um, yeah, just by just by telling the facts about Gutho. Is this new? Like are these new people that are, have aren't yeah. familiar with your game? Yeah. Because I don't, yeah. Because I, I look, look. I am, I'm fucking retired essentially from from, from you know being out in the timeline and and trying mm. and, and you know just trying to you know, act a fool. But because I think like, that's where I, we connected. That's where we yeah, connected yeah, it, all it those was. years ago. I can tell you. I, I, I can't tell you the date. But I can, yeah, I could. I could look. At, I could look it up and tell you the exact date it was because it was a game with Manly and the West Tigers, and I think the Tigers won like nineteen eighteen or something like that. But the Tigers were out to like eighteen nil lead, and there was it was like against the ball stuff, like you know, like uh, like Ox or something would put a like a grubber through and then um, the Tigers would scoop it up two metres out from the line and go like all the way down the other end and score. And then Manly had this epic comeback that was led by large by Watmo. And he sort of went on a one, like he scored a couple of tries, I think, and just went mm. on a one man fucking mission. And like, yeah, and it was, and it was a close game and we were fucking going out at that. That, that was, that was the game. And I was like, oh, this cunt can take it. Hey, like I'm, I'm fucking, <laughs> like, like sadly, I'm giving, you didn't realize to what extent. I'm, giving, <laughs> I'm, I'm giving, still I'm taking like, it, like because 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 sometimes like you know people can't take it, and then so I'll just I'll just keep I'll give it to them harder just to just to fucking run them off. But you can actually take them like this is fucking actually this kind of if I can take it then like and you can give it back as well. So like you know I fucking rate it. So yeah, and that's that's when that's when I made the decision to fucking you know like email you and you know get your email email you and you know set the, set the ball rolling into what become this. So you know it was kind of the end. Of, it would have been at the end of the two thousand and nine season, one of the last couple yeah. of rounds I would say. I don't yeah, remember yeah. the exact date. Um, but yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, so new big... people that have only recently yeah. encountered you have decided that yeah. you're this fresh-faced Twitter fucking or X person. Well, because it was after the Tigers game. I went in on Gutho. How good. And, then, and I've, got, I've got this a library of, like, saved memes and videos of players and stuff, and I've got one with Daly that he recorded and must have put on an Instagram story years ago. Yes, and he's, yes, and he's yes, like, I he's like that. hey, Gutho, yeah, Gutho, you we can't. So I put that on there, and people are fucking quote tweeting it and copying like you know Gutherson and the Eels and the NRL in there, and like you know this is fucking disgraceful behaviour. I mean, is he getting banned for this? And and then on yesterday morning, it was on like fucking SEN on the radio. They were talking about this daily fucking. Thing. <laughs> so oops, especially it's with from the last how many years game. ago. I don't know, but like years, like it is, like I would say, you know, circa four or five, maybe like it's, it's not recent at all. It certainly wasn't, it certainly wasn't a reaction video to his miss of the penalty goal on the other day, Monday, whatever it was. Like <laughs> it certainly wasn't then. I can give you a tip. Oh, I've had it, I have had it for fucking years. Um, and you know, it's to be brought out on very specific occasions, namely Gutho doing something that's worthy of it. So like you can't use it every day. It's not a daily driver, so so when you do get the opportunity to bring it out in a topical matter, it's you an Easter watch. Monday driver. <laughs> yeah. It's, anyway, we're so off topic right now. <laughs> it's a Cadillac. <laughs> anyway, oh. speaking of the Roosters and the Panthers, <laughs> look, the scoreline greatly flattered the Roosters. Obviously, they scored a couple at the end there, and um, did, did to make it to make it look respectable. The game was over for all intents and purposes at like what twenty two to you know not much. Yeah. Um, Pretty early on in the piece, and, and it wasn't you know really a, a, a contest. I mean, I don't know how happy or unhappy the Panthers are about. I mean, the the, po- the points really did come too late, so I don't think it was it was never really a situation where the Panthers were like you know they almost let us slip or you know, any of that sort of nah. thing. Um, Look, I'm, Dylan Edwards I'm, had a busy game. Yes. Um, just it was just just really just, really a busy game. It wasn't that he like he didn't do a lot, but he made a fucking he got a ton of touches and made a ton of meters, just cutting yeah. the ball. 
I, I um, am finding it like I used to delight in pointing out that the way to get Dylan Edwards out of a game is to keep kicking to him because he will make mistakes. Feel like he's no longer that guy. He doesn't but, drop it like every game. Nah. Like he used to drop it. You you usually count on one, at least two, at least two yeah, a right. game. Keep kicking it. Just vary your kicking game, and you'll get a couple of errors out of it. Yeah, that he was definitely that guy, and I used to shit on him mercilessly for it. But I find it hard to hate on that guy now. Yeah, I find that I find that extremely unsurprising considering he now looks exactly fucking like you. <laughs> I, I find it hard to hate on the man I look I see in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I find it easier to hate on myself than I do on Dylan Edwards. That's a bit sad, isn't it? That's your new theme song, yeah, Michael Jackson, the man, the man in the mirror. <laughs> I'm sucking off the man, the man in, the in the mirror. Yes. <laughs> I like it. It's got a fucking it's sketchy. That is catchy. <sighs> Excuse me. All right. You got nothing else to add to that? This is nah. the thing. Without the stepdad there, I mean, I don't know what Social's going to say either. So that's his job. Penrith Oops. fans bleating about, I, I'm pretty sure Chris Bailey said, meh, Penrith. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's about it. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Look, I'm, look, I'm sure Look, I'm sure it was insightful. Um, just copy and paste it next weekend. I'm sure it will relate to the same. <laughs> you reuse it on the games this week. <laughs> um, I, yeah, because this is the thing we've got. We've got the fine jobs. Like you know, I've got all the st- all the, the the flow written down here of what we're gonna do, and you know, stepdad's got the the you know the the socials and stuff, and then and yeah. you've got the you know generally like you know more more of notes on on the actual games themselves. Um, and when one of the fucking when one of the fucking uh, Bolts on the digger fucking break or just haven't been installed, as the case may be. Yeah, that hole ain't getting dug, Glenny. You would, you would know. You, you, you would know. You've, you, know. You've, you, you work in the MI. I do. You know how it works. I've told you this. Next game. We're rolling on a Malaysian digger tonight. Oh, All right. God, <laughs> damn. That's nasty. <laughs> Rabbits 20 defeated the Bulldogs 16 on Friday afternoon. Good Friday. And uh, the Roosters, a better, like, undoubtedly a better Rabbitos, effort. And, you said sorry, the Roosters, so Rabbitohs. And Jack White um, finally sort of got his, like, his debut to actually being a contributing member of Rabbitohs yeah. society. Um, <laughs> he, he, looked, he looked pretty good. Yeah. For his game. I think he, he, scored he a looked tries. pretty settled and, yeah. uh, you know, I said before when we were talking about NRL 360, it's definitely a much-needed win for the Rabbitohs. They looked okay in patches. To to get to the team to realise their paper potential and, and certainly where they've been over the last couple of years, I still completely disagree with um, with the what they've done to Ilias. I think he, 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 you stick with the kid, but... Um, it's still a hell of a long way for him to go. It's another Yeah, in loss. saying that though, Hawkins is, you know, now they've got a win and he's the guy there, so he's going to have some rope. Yeah, yeah. To, you know, That's continue, you know, to continue in the role for now anyway. Kind of how these things work, which is, is a shame, but... Um, it's not a shame yeah. for the Hawkins family, Glenny. Yeah, but... Look. You got shares in Big, Il- Big Ilias. <laughs> 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 it is, is a shame. A, Kids get dropped all the time, mate. It's all right. Why do you love him so much? No, what, I just, what, I just, <laughs> I just disagree with it wholeheartedly. Um, for the Bulldogs, again, rudderless, no direction, and for all the money that they've spent and all the names that they've bought, and we said it before, I don't know who they go after. As far as the seven, there was there was some handbags at ten o'clock on NRL three hundred and sixty because Buzz Rothfield um, suggested because oh, Anasta was saying, well, there was no one available, and he says Caesar was a Aiden Caesar was available, and he's killing it, and doggies and a doggies boy, yeah, yeah, and Anasta was like, he didn't even get 
pick to start round one. He's had two games, and all credit to him, but hardly would have known that he was going to be the saviour of, of yeah, the Yeah, but it would, have been, it would have been three games if one of your games wasn't a buy too. I mean, it, yeah. it only, it, it, I, Benji's not an idiot. It would have only taken him, taken him half a football to realise he fucked up <laughs> with Bud. Yeah. <laughs> Um, look, so look, I mean, I, I can be more conciliatory towards the, the the Bulldogs, and I say like you can definitely tell that there's like you can you can see that they're like they're they're building to something in the general demeanor that the team approaches games, and just the general like you know like resilience and defense and that sort of stuff. You can definitely tell there's an improvement in that, but my god, they've still absolutely fucking rudderless in attack, yeah. and that's the part that hasn't adapted to even. Fuck, I'm trying to think back though. Remember when they were um. I don't even think it was like Trent here. I think it might have been even before that, like, you know, late Des or, you know, who was it? Dean Pay had him for. Dean Pay, yeah. The, 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 yeah. And the same thing where they, they do like, you know, 85% completions for a game. Yeah. And it'd be like extremely high completions, extremely low errors, four points scored. Yeah. <laughs> in the game. And, <laughs> and it, it's, it's been like that. I mean, they really need like, they need like one of those prototype playmaking star fucking halfbacks and I just think that the market the way the market has been over the last couple of off seasons is that guy hasn't hit the market and that guy yeah. probably won't hit the market because I think at the moment when you look across the competition I think the number of those superstar halfbacks is you know probably at an all time low yeah if you I think agree. about it so and yeah, the, the, the point I think that, that goes unnoticed is They've had a crack at Ben Hunt. They spoke to Luke Brooks. They, you know, and and I'm not saying Luke Brooks was going to be the savior, but I don't think he would have been because he likes, you know, he he's a he's a, a he's run a first runner. player as well. And I mean, that's yeah. that's who Burton is. That's who fucking Hutchinson is. I mean, sexy isn't, and maybe he'll get his chance to, you know, be the halfback. Because I mean, he worked well. I remember when he first when he did that mid season transfer and that yeah. first game, first game he won. Um, you yeah. know. I but I just think when you've, you've created a whole new system there over time with new players, new coaching, you know, structures and, and all the rest of it, you can't just bring a halfback in. I, I think Sexton is the most pure seven that they have available yeah. at the moment, right? You can't just give a guy two or three games and go, ah, oh, well, those results, we didn't like those, you're out. Yeah. He needs yeah. an extended period of time to, to work into it. And that has been like a that has been a Seraldo trademark, hey. Like I mean, yeah. he does he just like will just fucking shuffle the deck constantly. Yeah. Um, but look, I, and I get he's under pressure, so you can't just go. Well, here, here, Toby, here's twelve games. How much pressure do you reckon? How much pressure do you reckon he's under? Seriously, given that the, they've spent a lot of money, like this year was another big spend. You know, getting guys like you know Crichton and stuff in. Um, mm. <clears throat> do you? Have, I mean. This this would still he would you would still think that he's got like a an easy leash like rest of the year like to make these guys work. Oh, I don't know, but, yeah, yeah. Gus is a ruthless old motherfucker, but I mean, and, yeah. and, and, and maybe Cameron and seeing, gets a little and, tired halfway yeah, through. Cause, yeah, because yeah, because like the whole tired thing. I mean, like often with Gus, like when the turn comes, it comes with very little fucking run up mm. and very 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 little inkling that it's going to happen. So, um, but yeah, look, I think you know. I think the Bulldogs, you know, defensively, there was a, you know, there are a lot. There's, there's definitely signs of improvement, but man, except, in, except in scoring points. And this was, you know, what probably there, you know, apart from the game against the Titans. I mean, this yeah. was there, you know, reasonable scoring effort from them. But yeah. uh, the Rabbitohs just, you know, slightly better and much more involvement from Latrell as well. And, and you know, you fucking reap the results. Yeah. But you know, that's what a surprise! You get the ball consistently into your best players. Hands and you win games. Magical things happen. Yeah, yeah. exactly. All right. Um, the Broncos thirty-eight defeat the Cowboys twelve on a Friday night at Suncorp Stadium. Now this one, shit conditions, and uh, not only were the conditions shit, but the the Cowboys, the lights were just too bright. <laughs> it Last was undefeated team going into this round. It was fucking embarrassing watching them try and cope with Reynolds' kicking game in the conditions. Perfectly, you know, like obviously strategic, obviously executed to perfection. Um, but every time he kicked the ball, I had zero confidence that Drinkwater or, or 
um, tell long he was, was going to be a chance yeah. of catching it. That's some fucking horrible attempts. <laughs> Abs- ab- absolute fucking calamitous. Yeah. Attempts um, at, at ball control, which is, which just gave the, I mean, and it's just one of those nights where every, everything bounced for the, yeah. the Broncos as well. But, um, yeah, because when they were like, okay, we're not catching the fucking things on the full, let them bounce. And it, was just, yeah. it just, oh, yeah. fuck, here's another try. Yeah, um, exactly. Just, look, Broncos probably needed that, and I think it was important with Reynolds back and Walsh still out. Um, I just, it brings up an interesting point about Tristan Saylor, where he's building an impressive body of work when he comes into first grade, but it's very sporadic given that he's he's running second fiddle, regardless of what position they're trying to shoehorn him yeah. into. Yeah. Um, I will say, you can't ask much more of the kid. No. And I think his next contract, obviously it's going to be somewhere else, but I think he's going to earn some, some decent coin um, from a club that can see what he's doing, gives him an opportunity to play consistent first grade. Um, I don't think he has a long-term, full-time starting spot in that Broncos team. Well, no, obviously not because he's behind their behind you know essentially you know their best player. I mean, like, if well, like, you know, I mean, is he is he only a fullback? He's he's obviously played wing. I, I've, has he played a bit yeah. of centre? But you're not going to give him a yeah, run. Like that, yeah, behind like, Stags, Cobo, you know, he's not going to get a run in the centre. I mean, like, you, you would think that he'd be able to compete, for, you know, versus the likes of Arthur's for mm. wing spot, but you know, guess not. kevy has got his boys. Yeah. The window's not old boy enough. Correct. But yeah, I'd, you know, again, first month of the competition, uh, I would like to think, you know, if I was a Cowboys fan, then that's not the team they are. They're the team. As oh, the I think, yeah. The, the, um, the intangible was, was the weather, and yep. they did not cope with it at all. And I don't know that you'll see a team of the caliber of the Cowboys capitulate due to conditions like that again for a long time, but it certainly happened on the night. And now, Stepdad has joined us just in time to do the socials. For which game? <laughs> the Broncos game. <laughs> uh, Jeff in the Facebook group said, uh, zero fucks given about the rain. That's a, a great fucking sum up of that game. Uh, Neil, Madge looking like a genius, leaving drink, walk, walker, drink water out of preseason origin camp. Sailor better than drink water. There yeah, but also, Just... like, I mean, realistically speaking, I mean, if there's one position at New South Wales, they legitimately have three fucking great options, yeah. native fucking fullbacks. That's and and they could probably extend that even to even more options before they even thought about fucking drink water. Yeah, that's like, it. fuck out of here. That's it. Uh, Lachlan, nothing I liked in that game more than Corey Oates getting a try. He'll get more going forward too. If the plan is to put him in the second row when a bit of space opens up late in the game. Uh, Jordan, I hate everyone involved with the Broncos and Reese Walsh even more for pretending he can don an Akubra. Was there talk about his cowboy hat? Was the No, we well, didn't. Maybe he thought it was fancy dress and he went as boss hog on. <sighs> Can I tell you how little I give a fuck about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because, who fu- I mean, like, if he was doing it to troll, then great. I like it a lot more. I like him a lot more if that yeah. was the case. And but honestly. And anyone that says that, you know, oh, that's not the Broncos uniform, has not been to any Broncos home games <laughs> where you get fucking half price admission if you wear RM Williams boots, a fucking sleeveless puppy vest, and a cowboy hat. <laughs> A country road chambray shirt. Fucking hell. <laughs> uh, Jay, I'm still pumped about that Broncos oh, masterclass. All those forced errors was top-notch tactical football. Finding weakness and exploiting it for victory is what footy smarts is all about. I agree. Well done. Next done? Go. Yeah. Dragons, 20, defeated the Mighty Manly Seeds Eagles, 12, at Wynn Stadium. And my God... This is going to be the first time I'm going to say this. I actually, for the first time in my life, I might think the fucking hoodoos actually are fucking real. Because this ground, I said it before the, like when we were talking about this game in advance, To I think we first played here in 2005 and probably played 12-ish, 13 times and won once. And that was last year. 
fuck, fuck me drunk is fucking grounded. And the and I watched the fucking reserve grade game beforehand as well, and it was just as fucking bad. Like I don't know if it's got if it's fucking got lead under the ground or like it has to be something faster acting than asbestos. But whatever that, I don't know whether it's just the general odor that the fucking that the, the Illawarra fucking rugby league fans have, I, because I mean it was a fair it was a fair crowd there. Um, I just don't fuck, but I, absolute fucking vortex of rugby league. And this game in itself was probably the worst game I've seen since our fabled back in the day, Glenny, like the Monday night foot bitch, yeah, fucking tri series between. Who was it at the time? I think it was like Peak Spoon Knights, Peak Spoon Eels, uh, Cronulla. and Titans maybe. It was Cronulla, was it? Oh, Cronulla fucking was another one. Yeah. Just where you get those fucking horrible games that would be like fucking 6-4 on a Monday night. And this was this was exactly that fucking game. Both teams were absolute fucking garbage. Dragons slightly picked up more chances, more of their chances than Manly. Manly's first fucking 10 minutes was, was phenomenal. I mean... Looked amazing, and maybe that was the worst thing that happened. They were just like, okay, fucking cool. We just, just it's a training session. We'll just fucking do what we want. But my fucking god, the errors! I've never seen errors the likes. I don't even know what the final line was between both teams, but it had to mean something like fifteen each or twenty each, like errors, which is fucking like unbelievable line. And I mean, that's just a guess. But I, mean, I know Jay usually is, has the stats near him, so I'm sure you interject, but. Worst, so worst. What, what stats would you like? I reckon errors. I don't think errors. It had to be close to 15 yeah, each look, minimum. Yeah, it, com, complete, completion with Manly at 69%, and the Dragons at 73 Yeah. So it, it's, it wasn't a like a high-quality game, and you're spot on. It was, <laughs> did, it, did you fucking think? It, it was, <laughs> did you watch it? <laughs> yeah, no, I know, but but some sometimes, you know, it's the reason for the errors. You know, if... If there's oh, both I'm... both sides have crunching defense and it's tackle yeah, spilling no. the ball, that's a different game to yeah, cuts no. of passing five meters in front of somebody. But you're right, fifteen errors apiece. Yeah, it was it was dro- dropping the ball in fucking like from hooker. It was yeah. dropping the ball when you you know pulling your arm out to you know throw an offload. It was just dropping the ball for no particular fucking re- dropping the ball because it was a day that ended in Y. It was the fucking worst football I've seen, and for some players in particular, like the worst fucking game. I've mm. ever seen and for their careers so I guess if anything it's good to get that one behind them um, are you, are you in round, in round four oh fucking oath absolutely yeah. like, and it was funny like 20 minutes in I couldn't tell if he was having a blinder or a shocker because the way like with the way he'd make mistakes would be it was like yeah he's like he busts through you have three guys hanging off him in a tackle and he's just trying to get his arm out and he goes to throw yeah. the offload and it just falls yep. out forward or like yeah it was just it was shit in the in the commission you know in the middle of the commission of doing something that was like you know if if it come off it was brilliant and so I wasn't sure if he was having a shocker or but then it definitely became like obviously clear that it was a shocker and to the point that I reckon it just like I reckon it head fucked him out of any involvement in the game from a probably about. I don't know, like 30 minutes, like in the end of the first half, maybe. Like, just, just like, I fucking got to stay away from the ball because I've got fucking bad juju on me. <laughs> and, and, and I can't, and too late, Tommy, you fucking touched the ball already and the bad juju spread. And not just, <laughs> and, and not, and not just us, to fucking them too. It was, it, it, oh, it was fucking punishing. And I remember saying to like some friends, while watching the reserve grade game, like, this is the fucking lowest quality football unenjoyable fucking football to watch I've ever seen. First grade said, hold my beer. And and this, (laughs) and this fucking, and this game like fucking topped it. I mean, maybe, I mean, maybe it was slightly better quality overall, but it's first grade. The expectations are also, you know, equally higher. And, um, and yeah, this, yeah, fucking, I would love to be the fly on the wall in fucking the, the video sessions this week. And uh, and I can just hope that fucking Jakey just, you know, maybe he made Tom cut cut his fucking pinky, you know, the first knuckle off as like a Yakuza sort of atonement. Or maybe Jakey just fucking just bashed him all fucking week and just <laughs> had him out in the backyard doing fucking run, run it straight all, all week fucking <laughs> just to fucking punish him. Because, yeah, fucking not good at all. And the thing is, like... <sighs> 
I'm trying to think of something like you know super positive to say about the Dragons too, but I mean they weren't fucking great either. I mean there was some like some moment, great moments from Tyrell Sloan as he has every every single week. Yeah. Um, like Jack Bird was pretty solid too. Um, um fucking what's I'm his name? To... The guy that left Manly. Um. Oh fucking hell! I've stroked out on him. Who's their centre that left? Suli. Yeah, Suli. I thought yeah. Suli had a good game, and he had yeah, he a reason too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, you're right. You've summed up that one pretty well. Oh, fucking just an absolute kind of a game and fucking, you know, um, happy congratulations on, on your wedding to, um, to our mate Trotters. Um, I hope you like the fucking present that I engineered for you. Cunt. <laughs> this, <laughs> this fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> the influence of this podcast is fucking, is, is incredible. And, uh, and and it's the last time I use it for this fucking purpose. There you go. There you go. Uh, Hammers. He said, it's only taken four weeks, but Luke Brooks has finally managed to fully integrate that Tigers culture into the Manly Club. It's Actually, Brooks, he's one, of the, he's one of the only ones that I wouldn't fucking execute after the game. Him, him and probably Tolu are about the only ones I reckon that were... Let's say not shit, <laughs> because that's that's because that's what I'm giving the fucking. Pass that's the highest that praise you can that's, offer them. And that's that is like Dally M level praise. <laughs> after, after you fucking sacrificed yourself on the altar of friendship, Devon Heads come in with can't wait to hear what Manly fans read from the book of excuses this week. Ouch! I don't think anyone. That's had fucking any excuses. Harsh. It is. Uh, probably, Joey. It's probably it's wishing anyway. a fucking Kardashian fucking timeline we don't, we type don't, divorce. We don't, make, we, don't make ex- we don't make excuses, mate. We, we, I mean, we had to merge the same year you did, except we've got fucking, you know, multiple grand finals and multiple premierships out of it. How about you? Spoons. There you go. Ben Thank Hunt you. don't want to be there. Hey, how about that? Zach, Zach Lomax, they're saying like, yeah, he's at the, at the end of the year, he's going to be free to explore his options. There you go. Didn't they say that last year? I mean, they didn't afford the same courtesy to Benjamin Hunt. <laughs> and he doesn't want to be there either. And oh, probably more vocally. <laughs> so. uh, Joey, Seabolt's coaching coming into full effect. Giannis, two months ago, Manly were winning a trial match, causing their fans to ejaculate over a game which collected precisely zero points. Flano, however, was playing 4D chess. I will Shame. tell you, though, the, the next round, I don't remember, I don't know what round it is. But I think the next time we play the Dragons is around the mid mid to late June, yep. which is going to be around a week or maybe two weeks away from the 30-year anniversary of 61-0 at Brookvale. Um, so, yeah, we'll give that a fucking nudge, bitch. There you go. We'll see how you go. We'll see how you go then. Shane said, we can't hide behind a purported bad call this week. That was absolute shit. Worst game I've seen from Tommy, DC, and the rest. Turn a performance like that in next week against Penrith, and it will be a cricket score. I'll tell you what, you'd rather have that game against the Dragons than Penrith, so it's good. To get and I feel that may not look that could have been a factor too. Maybe one eye on you know the the, the next game, and this one's just you know already sort of you know like banked it emotionally. Yeah, so, um, but we'll Anthony, find out. I punched the couch. That's how mad <laughs> I was with this game. I punched the couch like a child having a tantrum. <laughs> look, in the scheme of things. Punching the couch, like generally, you know, like a soft surface that can't feel pain. <laughs> that's probably a, like a decent, a decent scenario. I mean, mate, I was, I was exact, I was in the exact same situation. I was out in the back in, in a beanbag. I punched the beanbag, and um, not my beanbag, a beanbag. With your dick, um, <laughs> Lando. Like, said it seems like what else he is. Seems like manly. Of what I, <laughs> we're lucky Nate didn't direct the new Roadhouse movie. <laughs> <laughs> Did you watch that movie? No, not yet. It's fine. Um, it's pretty. It's it's not. It's it's very not good. But I mean, if you're watching it, obviously you expect that to be the case. Yeah, that's it. But it's funny because like they're all playing it straight. Like everyone's playing it like a serious action or like you know drama sort of movie yeah. with action. And then Conor McGregor waltzes in like fucking like Nicolas Cage in Kiss of Death or yeah. Like, it's like he's that. in a, he's he's in a completely another movie. And so it's fucking hilarious because because he does not fit in this movie at all, which which is which actually actually what makes it like you know kind of like entertaining. Yeah, nice. uh, Lando said it seems like Manly are what I thought they were. It takes an especially mid team to not let the Dragons beat themselves in the second half. I really great. want to wrap the Dragons defense, but a good team would have scored thirty points in that second half. Exactly. There we go. Done. The ultimate testament. Okay, uh, where are we? Dolphins. The Dolphins, 30, defeated 
the Gold Coast Titans 14 at Hope Solo Coliseum. And this one, the Titans gave their fan base a little a glimmer of a hope that something was going to happen. And, you know, and by half didn't. time, by half time, it was almost evaporated. Um, particularly with the with the Dolphins having to withstand a period of time there as well where, you know, they had uh, Max Plath in the bin. A period of a, time in the game where you would expect the Titans to, to actually gain an upper hand and and put themselves in a position to, to go on and win the game. The exact opposite happened. The Titans went into cruise control. The Dolphins managed that 10-minute period perfectly. Well, it was actually like that was the period in which the Dolphins like actually ground their way back into the yeah. game, which is fucking weird. <laughs> Maybe you got guys like, you know, like Campbell and, and Lofi Khan Pereira and Brimson, and, like guys that you would say are among the faster players in the game. Mm. Um, you can't find a way to exploit those guys <laughs> with a man down on the opposition side. Um, you have to take a serious look at the coaching. Oh, it's Des. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, said. Fucking um, die, you tight yeah. cunts. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, fucking hell. I, I feel like the Titans go through patches of, of games. Um, some longer periods than others, but where they're, where they're absolutely fucking atrocious. And it doesn't mm. matter what they do, they can't get out of their own way. Sometimes it's five minutes, sometimes it's ten, sometimes it's longer. Certainly the dogs game was was definitely longer. Mm. And like there's, there's losing focus or, or coming in and out of games, which teams that, you know, aren't at that top level have a tendency to do. And then there's just not being there at all. And yeah. switching off completely. I think the Titans probably had that as a bad habit this year. And it's not normally a trademark of a Des team, but again, we've said it multiple times to, to start the season. I, I legitimately feel like the game has passed Desmond Hasler by. Um, and I think this season, as it goes on till the duration, it's we, going to become painfully obvious that that's but it, the case. But it's so interesting that that's how, that that can actually happen. Especially when you're someone who is is actually, you know, by all reports, extremely fucking intensely engaged in the in the in coaching twenty four seven. Yeah, Re, you know, like a, a researcher and you know, like a student. Yeah, exactly. Like they, well, I guess it's just someone who's who thinks that they've got it figured out. And because if the and, fucking armchair experts like us can, like, if you if you had to rattle off in the last five years, the the changes in the game or the 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 differences in elite teams now than were, you know, uh, fitness, overall fitness would be one in mm-hmm. terms of because the game now demands that with fewer stoppages and fewer penalties and the six again calls. Great, greater pace, yeah. That's it. More um, time in play. It'd be the greater role and involvement of your backs in starting a set. Yep as opposed to previously just the first, maybe second carry, and then relying on your forwards for the majority of your cartage meters. Like the, there's, it's not these earth-shattering fucking concepts. But you look at that Titans team, and it just seems to be these little effort areas. Like, their first contact is fucking woeful. And they're being put in one-on-one tackling situation far too often. So whatever defensive structures he has, whether they don't understand it, whether they're not out there executing it or whether it's a bad structure, the amount of times that a Titans defender ends up one-on-one with a ball carrier and their first contact is ineffective, it just, it invites so many teams directly into the attacking zone. And the, they can't the thing is, when you, don't, when you don't have the roster, you know, what you can do is you can just sort of, you know, develop some defensive structures and everything and, like, yeah. and get that. And, that, you know, that can be the first thing you get right. Yep. Because, like... That's the that's the other thing. I mean, they they just they don't have the roster. Like Tanner Boyd fucking sucks. Yeah. Um, and like there's yeah some of these guys that they've got like in their back line are like you know have some like natural athletic stuff, but their footy IQ is extremely fucking low. I mean, they don't have a, a proper first up hooker. Um, like Verrills is, you know, he's fallen off a cliff since he left Easts. Yeah. 
Yeah. And yeah, and gone to these guys. I mean, they don't have Tino. You know, he's fucking gone. So it falls just on, on that on the shoulders of Mo Fotoaka. Yeah, that it does. But as far as so for yardage, they, they'll turn to Mo, and I think he does a fair job. Yeah. But for impact, they have to lean on Fafita far more heavily. And, yep. and I don't think Fafita wants that at all. I don't think he wants a bar of it. Yeah. No. He's he's so little, uh, has such a low influence on their results when he's probably the most paid or one of the most paid and certainly the highest profile guy in the team. And, and they've, look, they've got those plays they run for him where they'll get him very wide and put him one-on-one, you know, or one-on-two, right. yeah, with, with a yeah. complete physical mismatch. But, you know, to, to be able to, you've got to earn the right to run those plays. Mm. But we've also seen that season after season. Teams are actually capable of stopping that. Centers, you know, like... Who's he running at? Is, is he running at five eights? And I think the the guys well, the play. in and in and outside those players are, are far more adept at, at stopping yeah, that. That's and it. What What's his next move? What's What other plays he got? That's Correct. it. I'm just big and but fast. They, ha- they haven't even ever evolved into the stage of, well, because he's such a threat, we'll use him as a as a decoy. Like that season that Penrith had, um, you know, Luai, Kikau. Crichton and Toto, every single one of those players was a threat, and so defences were absolutely fucked any time the ball went out there. But they they haven't even evolved to to be able to have him and have him floating around visibly to create to get the attention of a defence. You know, there's yeah, I don't know. There's a there's a lot of fucking work to be done in that club from Look, the ground up. They need they 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 need some creativity in the halves, and you know, feet is not getting utilised correctly. So I think that you'll all agree. So the only the only possible solution to this is a straight swap for for Josh Schuster. Um, who says no? Uh, let's get it done before June thirty. Um, Dave okay, Fafita running run. off short balls from Brooksy. Call it now. Incredible. Call it now. Does Fafita does Fafita leave because he's got that get out clause? They are talking about it a lot. I mean, there's okay. So the thing is, is there's only not many people have the money to Correct. to bring him in or you know, the, the pieces to swap out or, you know, whatever to try and alleviate. What's, what's the, the, isn't it just a, that his contract would be terminated? Isn't it just... Yeah, a, but, he's, but I mean, he's still, you know, I mean, if he's on a milling now, I mean, he's going to want that-ish. Yeah, he is. Next, so, so they need to have that, you know. But then also, you know, he might need to realise that, well, hang on, the best props in the game aren't getting what he's getting. Yeah. The best forwards in the game aren't getting what he's getting. Yeah, they'd be getting close though. I mean, like, he's, like if he if he could take like eight hundred, then yeah, that's it. You know, that'd be you know. But yeah, but do you reckon he walks or do you reckon he stays? Because what is it? Till the, round, he's got till round ten. All the talk is that he, that you know he's going to walk, but nothing from him. You know, what I mean, it's just like all the speculation. Yeah. And I don't know if that's like wishful thinking because it'd be hilarious if he did. Yep. Leave. Like for me, that's the, that's that's the key thing. I mean, it'd, it'd just be funny. And I just like chaos, so <laughs> <laughs> so that would be the most chaotic thing for Titans fans. And after they've already lost Tino for the year, yeah, it's just yeah. funny. Do the, do the funniest thing. <clears throat> Noughts. He said this team is fucking diabolical. They wouldn't even hold up against a C grade Toowoomba touch side. <laughs> there you go. Appreciate uh, the uh, sentiment. <laughs> Cruzy. He said, "I'm sorry, but I called this a few years back." Hashtag Fold Coast. Wow, Wait called what up. exactly though? Like way to punch uh, down. But, but but what what down. did he call? What did he call a few years ago? The Dolphins beating them. The the fact that they would fail with Des as a coach. Like I mean, you need to be more specific. What you, what you are as a Broncos fan who ate a few rights, who, who rights, ate a few half be. fucking half baked ducks, and you know got high off, got a high off your half baked ducks and just started saying shit at little brother. That's what but that's what this he, is. No, he's essentially <laughs> the the Glenny of Broncos fans. He basically mm-hmm. lives on the Gold Coast. Yeah, true. And and decides just for some fucking clout, he's going to turn around and support the successful team. I mean, like, Glennie's kind of the Glennie of the, the Broncos, though. I mean, you know, unless we forget the whole win yeah, incident. Hey, aren't we shitting on Cruzy? <laughs> 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 oh, I like uh, it when you shit on Cruzy and not me. James. <laughs> Let's keep doing that. 
Uh, James said the Titans were better when they had Dan Sargentson. Let that sink in. Oh, the Sarge. That was that was that was one of my great memories though. Fucking that hell. game with Norts and, and Benny sitting there watching a, a magic round with uh, the Titans taking on the Storms oh, and having God. a massive boil over in a shootout, like thirty something to thirty something, and the Titans got the win with Sarge fucking go, running a muck. The Sarge. Yeah. Fucking. This it's still to me the funniest part of that night ever. The funniest part of that night was as we were walking up from our seats to get beers, our uh, good friend of the show, Rowdy, was with me. And as we were heading to the top, there was a bloke who'd obviously been arrested and was about to get kicked out for something. And he was fucking resisting. He was resisting hard. (laughs) And this was back in the day before, you know, people thought it was a good idea to film everything and put it on socials. So the the cops were going full fucking to the extent of their powers. Oh, Rodney King and him. Oh, man. (laughs) Anyway, and so as we're coming up the stairs, you know, at some stage, you're at eye level with the top step. Yep. You know, and so this guy is face down on the top step, kicking and screaming and spitting, and Rowdy Calm as you fucking like, just sort of leans right into him and just goes, mate, if I were you, I'd really stop resisting. (laughs) (laughs) And the guy just stopped. Just like, it's like he's the crackhead whisperer. It was fucking great. <laughs> Thank you, Officer Rowdy. Yeah. All I, needed was, I just needed a little bit of input from you. And then when he got out of the watch house the next day, he's telling all his friends and everything that fucking the Jared Croker told him <laughs> not to resist. And so he, he, he stopped the cops from bashing him or something. You know, that's how the story goes. Uh, Liam, Titans fans shouldn't hate Dez for not bringing them success. He's like a lot of blokes. He wants to move up to the Gold Coast, smash beers at the surf club, and use his past glory to pick up OnlyFans models. Can't say you wouldn't do the same. That is correct. Tim McIntyre, we'll finish with him. He said, Dolphins versus the team we always beat. Nice to have that. Fuck yeah. The Warriors, 20, defeated the Knights, 12, over in New Zealand. And uh, this one, bounce back from the Warriors. Knights, still on Struggle Street. And... uh, the first time we've seen some of the old attack coming out of RTS as well, really. Oh, wasn't that pretty? It was. It, look, like let's yeah, it was, it was amazing. But let's also uh, temper our temper our uh, our ejaculation by also conceding that he did miss eighty percent of the tackles he attempted in this game <laughs> as well. <laughs> so, hey. but, but but in attack, in attack. Yeah, he had that one run where he like stepped like five guys. Tell you what, <laughs> you don't buy a fucking barbecue to vacuum your floors, okay? <laughs> That's true. But I mean, you, don't, <laughs> you don't cook you, meat and complain that 13, the ground's dusty. But if you've got 13 guys coming over to the last line of defense for a barbecue, you probably want your barbecue <laughs> <laughs> to be working in this analogy, right? <laughs> but look, at the end of the day, like the Knights, the, the Knights were locked out of this game pretty pretty solidly and it was only really there at the end where they got one try and then off the kickoff they sort of spread it and they almost got another one but for a great you know sort of heads up play um from uh, rts to sort of break it up yeah um and so it did i mean like it you know down to the last couple of minutes i mean it did it did get kind of exciting there at the end with the knights getting that try in the, in, in the last sort of you know five but uh, otherwise it was a fairly it was a fairly controlled performance from the Warriors really and you know for 75 minutes of the game I mean they really did you know have it all <clears throat> do you reckon RTS ends up long term ends up just back on the wing well he's going back in the centres this week I think mm. yep um, and so I guess that's probably where he's that, that's his next that's his position where he's not yeah. going to deputise him full back because someone's out yeah. injured yep. yeah that's and I, I guess <clears throat> even trying to have him on the wing you know with, with DWZ and Montoya there that like they're pretty entrenched in the side that yeah and like five years ago with. five years ago if you said that the DWZ and and Marcelo Montoya were the entrenched fucking wingers in a side not to be dislodged you would have fucking laughed yeah yeah, yeah. because they both had very they both had periods being memes of players but, but, but doesn't DWZ that go, particularly though? is fucking awesome lately for the Warriors I mean do, doesn't that go to just the <clears throat> the right situation for the right player. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. You know? Um, but, but again, like, fuck it, I said, every time he comes up, he was, what, like, I loved him when he was at Penrith. Yeah. When, when he understood what his job was. When he was just content doing his fucking job, he was great at it. But then he had somebody in his ear saying he was a fullback, 
or he had his brother that had probably his agent, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, his his brother had cop a head high and he'd go all fucking Rambo. But yeah, absolutely fucking solid player. But the I like the control out of the Warriors now. They've always been, you know, we said rocks and diamonds for as long as we've fucking been talking about them. They've been rocks mm. and diamonds. But the control and the patience that they can play with now makes them especially fucking scary. I was really concerned that last year was going to be a flash in the pan. So it was going to be a, a unique SJ year. Um, and they'd come back this year, you know, a couple of AFB goes, a couple of differences in the squad, uh, and just not be able to hit those same heights. But fuck me, they've gone up a, up a level. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, that, yeah, uh, just yeah, they they are going to have to overcome. I think um, uh, Tamari Martin's back in the side this week because they have to overcome uh, the loss of Metcalf for a bit now. Yep, um, which is a shame for him because uh, that's that 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 had become their A team there with Johnson and Metcalf. Yeah, um, <clears throat> but yeah, otherwise, like it's really it's really just on the on Newcastle to to what the fuck they what, what the fuck they're going to do. I mean, like the Saifidis. Don't particular don't they don't have the the line bending ability that they used to they, have they that they previously had yeah it felt like it was recent but maybe it wasn't but <clears throat> I mean I think apart from apart from you know Frizzell there's not a lot of aggression in that pack who is just fucking ageless though he really is yeah and I mean like he doesn't have that he doesn't have that game every game but. He fucking has them. He has moments every game. Yeah, definitely. Like he, and enough that he would be game planned for by every coach. Yeah, like if every coach would understand the, the three D poses. Um, first one off the line we'll give to our old mate Levi. He said the paper Dally M champ versus the people's Dally M champ. Up the wires, baby! It's our year. Uh, oh. And then uh, he's put his fucking stalking photo in there as well. Go to the Facebook and have a look at that. Uh, Daniel, Saifidis are the laziest props in the game. Cost us points every game. It's embarrassing. Yeah, you're not wrong. Um, Danny, with Newcastle fans and being called fucking Daniel or Danny. Uh, at no point did we deserve to win that. Stupid mistakes and the Waz defence made sure of that. Isaac, ridiculous that the broadcaster of the game talks super coach, super coach points as if they are real stats. Leave the sponsored contents for the super coach live ladder or whatever. I don't know. I got Frizzell in my super coach team. Fucking give me those good stats. <laughs> yeah, look at the end of it. I mean, there's that and there's the fucking stupid VB bullshit as well. I yeah, mean, that's it. Yeah, this is why you this is why you watch games with the fucking volume turned down. Exactly. There we go. Okay, the uh, Sharks 36 to feed the Raiders 22 uh, down at Reclaim Australia Stadium. And uh, this one is a classic, classic Faders performance. Going out to an 18-0 lead yeah. before being run down very quickly. And, Wasn't it uh, quick? ultimately put away. I, I um, thought the Sharks were, were definitely better than, than the week prior. But as you say, the Raiders gifted them an avenue back into the game. And at 18-0... With the type of side we expect Canberra to, to continue to be this season, they they've really got to go on with that. Like, yeah, like there's, there's and a they whole just, meme about the once it started, it like they had nothing to to pull it back. Yeah, yeah there's that whole sort of meme about the you know at the fourteen nil, but eighteen nil. I mean, you should fucking go on with that. Yeah, at, at eighteen nil, because even if you get a scare, it takes it to eighteen twelve or eighteen six. I mean, kick field goal, do fucking something. Yeah, to, to fucking break the combo. Yeah, like something. Um. Yeah, I think I said last week these are two quite uh, similar sides with you know similar ways of of going about their business. Both like to play bully ball um, through their through their forwards, but they both of them have a tendency. We saw it with the Sharks in the game against the Tigers, um, and and here the Raiders have done the same thing against the Sharks. They have a tendency to wilt. When their opponent pushes back heavily, like Raiders, when the going was when it was all going their way, run out to an eighteen nil lead. Everything's you know they're doing everything right. The second the Sharks pushed back and showed their, that they were up for the fight, especially physically, Canberra didn't want to bar it. Yeah, yeah, and the Sharks are probably the best side at bullying, mm. to, like running downhill 
Yeah. When they get, you know, when they when they find a a, a path of zero resistance. Um, remember when um when Ricky was first when they were first trying to get uh Xavier Savage into the side, and um people was you know complaining that Ricky you know that he wasn't had, he wasn't giving enough minutes. I had exactly yeah. the same thought during and the he, game. And he was saying like you know he's got he's to, not ready. He's got, to learn, he's got to, he's not ready. He's got to learn how to play first. He's got to learn how to become yeah. a first grade you know NRL player or whatever. He yeah. Said at the time, um. I think he may have fucking finished being an NRL player. <laughs> <laughs> the way he played in this game. Um, look, and this is like two years later, or like a year, like a, you know, a season, a full season later or something. Um, so, look, maybe Ricky isn't wrong every time. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe he got, maybe he got this one right. But, uh, fuck, he was terrible. I mean, he was a large part of the the comeback, obviously. But um, yeah. Oh. It's- there's so many things about that side, you know, and, and up look, up until now, Rappiner had had a very good season at fullback as I think he was overachieving at fullback. But then this game, those old hands came out and those old habits came out and just, you know, you, you can't afford in this day and age. Like that season that Penrith had with where Dylan was a liability under high balls. Mm. We are just talking about that earlier. There you go. Um, you know, it, it's untenable. It's untenable to have a fullback that that can have multiple of those in a game. Even the best fullbacks in the world are going to drop a ball from time to time. Yeah. Um, but if you know, if you kick to them all game and that's yeah. your strategy and you're going to get two errors yep. yeah. minimum, that's it. There could be 12 points. Yeah. If, yeah. if another team's strategy can be kick to the fullback, yeah. you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, oh, exactly. Uh, Glenn. Watching the Raiders' defense sit back and let the opposition make an easy 10 meters every run is fucking infuriating. They never push up, and it's a tactical play that has cost us plenty of times. Tom, I'd love an Easter miracle. Resurrection of uncontrolled childlike anger, Ricky, at the presser after a questionable loss. Just a shame that would mean the Sharks win. John, it was a game of poor ball handling by both teams, but the Sharks keep their hoodoo over the Raiders by simply holding onto the ball longer and completing their sets. The arm wrestle that was the second half showed the Sharks better in the scrap and able to finish, hoping for a better Raiders game at home. What else we got? What else we got? What else we got? Oh, R- Rory's top, uh, putting a screenshot of his fucking degenerate multi. Well done. Go and check out that one. Next game. Hey, Cronulla, I mean, like, at least, like, Cronulla fans, at least act like you're fucking happy to have a team in a competition and maybe help them fucking fill up their stadium and maybe try and f- sell it out once in a while, you fucking lazy cunts. Um, I don't Tigers. Know, all, I've, all I've seen this week is Sharks fans whinging about the prices of tickets to things. Hmm. Well, well that, of, that, yeah. that brings me to my next point. I was made aware this week that there's some apparently some sort of fucking Sharks membership that you can get for like $120 that gives you five uh, game tickets and a full membership pack. Yeah, I mean, like I think like every club would have that. How, but how, how the fuck are you not selling that out then? Every yeah. game. Well, I guess because, you know, that you've probably got what, you got 12 home games, let's say, for argument's sake. Yep. Um, some of them might move around, like, you know, Magic Round and stuff, but let's say you got 12. Yep. So you're picking, you're picking your five, and maybe Canberra's not one of the five. I don't know. Mm. Maybe it's not one of the most five desired... Home contests of season twenty twenty four. There you go. I guess I is that know. is that because the people might have thought Canberra was a top eight team and they would be able to beat them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. There's no real. I mean, I'm just trying to think. There's no. There's no real, like historical bad, like bad beats or anything to Canberra. Or there's no. You know, there's no like feud right. sort of stuff. Like, like, like Manly. I get. You know, like we had grand finals and stuff in the seventies, and you know, they were like you know violent grand finals as well so yeah there's there's always been like a, a thing you know following that but yeah and i mean i'm sure the sharks have got you know unfinished business against a number of other clubs as well like you know dragons is always a big one for them as well yep um but yeah maybe the raiders just don't rate i don't know anyway let's get on to the good one glenny again let's. i told you i fucking told you tiger 17 to be the eel 16 and now I opened the floor to my good friend, Glenny. <laughs> Take me through Look, the feelings, the emotions. It was it was an exciting game, I think. I was... Actually, sorry, can I, just, can I just rephrase this game? The NRL fan 17 <laughs> defeated Clint Gutherson 16. 
Please, sorry, please continue. <laughs> I love it. I do love it. And I do love the outpouring of Gutho hate that come as a result of this game. I celebrated this win, not like a grand final, maybe like, like the first round of finals when you're yeah. like, when you're first and you're playing eighth and you know you're going to win, but like, it'd be still happy you won like that, that, yeah. that level of final. I, I can't relate, but I'll take your word for it. Um, <laughs> I just, just on that, I was, I did bring back a few memories of that game where we did a member side last year with the, with the Cowboys where they got that ridiculous fucking penalty after full time. I had the same flashback. <laughs> And I was like, ah, oh, fuck. That's a kind of a way to lose if we lose it from here. Um, but I was still impressed with the majority of the performance across the 80 minutes. And then I saw that Gutho was going to be taking the kick because he, he had not taken all the kicks yeah. um, during the game. He had ab- abdicated his responsibilities yeah. for the entire game. And he wanted to step up and, and have an opportunity to be the hero, which speaks to his character. And I mean the fact that he thinks he's the hero. Mm-hmm. Um, I reckon he was singing that song to himself in his head. You're trying to like the Nickelback one? I need a hero. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, no. <laughs> they got the on for a hero at the end of the game. Na, 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 na. <laughs> yeah. That's probably a lot of what goes on in Gutho's head. Na, 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 na. <laughs> they call me Gutho. As soon as I saw that he was going to be taking the kick, I was like, we're good. <laughs> Legitimately... We're good. I honestly don't feel he's kicking this. Sure enough, fucking sprayed it. It was delightful. Um, Tigers defensively in that first half had six or eight sets where they defended their guts out, um, and that set the tone for the match. Unfortunately, they went through a 10, 15-minute period (laughs) where they they were, were still trying to, to put things together. They just couldn't get out of their own way and made silly errors and, and were giving away piggyback penalties, which you got the feeling that they would, as much as Parramatta were without Moses, you, you still, there's enough strike power in the team to, um, if you give them that much ball, that they can make you pay. And and they did. Um, they went up 14-6 and then, to their credit, and they showed a level of resilience in this game. I don't know that it lasts for the for the entirety of the season. Time will tell, but it's certainly something we haven't seen a great deal of for, for several seasons. They stuck in. It's, sorry, they stuck to their guns and they they hung into the game, and then they started to take more advantage of their opportunities and and clawed their way back into the game. And and you know they had Lockie. Sinbin for a, for a hip drop, which is a pretty ugly one. Uh, he's got two weeks, and again, Parramatta were on the attack, and and you just you felt like fuck with all that defence that we've done, um, and you know now Parramatta's got more ball. We're down a man for ten minutes. We're already going to be fatigued at the back end. It it and certainly in years gone by that would have been the death knell, but they actually stuck with it and and scored a try with 12 men off an old-fashioned run around. Lockie came back onto the field and, and had his moment uh, where he palmed off his Westfield Sports High teammate um, to Lungy, who I, I think is going to be an absolute gun. But I think we're pl- trying to play him at six at the moment is, is a too big an ask for a kid. Um, and, you know, Reem scores under the sticks and, and Tigers are back in. So that's not something we've seen from the Tigers very often over the last however many years and to see it uh, and to see the, the, the commitment and the passion on the on the faces of the players to, even Clemmer sticking it to Gutho before he took the kick and then feeding him yep. when it when it was obvious that he missed um, people have had a lot to say about about Clemmer since he came to the Tigers but you can't deny the guy is, is a passionate individual and when when the Tigers are winning games, they'll get the best of that. And yeah, I was, I was stoked with the performance. I was stoked with the win. And, um, you know, again, it, we, we've had, 
periods of, of seasons where we've we've won a couple of games and then fallen away heavily and lost four or five. I just want to see them stick to it, and I, I can handle losses. Um, it, it, it's part of the part of the process, but you just want to see that consistency of effort um, and the, the the commitment to to what they're doing and what Benji's trying to instill. And um, yeah, after round one, they were you know sorry after. Round two with the Tigers' first game, they were calling for his head after the game against Canberra. Um, it's not a lot being, not a lot of negativity being spoken about the Tigers, and I'm here for it. Well, some of these fuckheads are trying to do it. They still like um, the reporters and stuff. But Benji's, you know, with with a win behind him, he can get a bit more lippy back too. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, he's he's actually handling the press conferences really well. And yeah, yeah. He's, I mean, he's very media savvy. Always has been, but. Um, from a coach's perspective, I think he's handling it really well, and I think he's he's set a narrative that it's not about him. Uh, he's a high profile guy. He's certainly within the Tigers stratosphere. He's, he's the highest profile guy we've, we've ever had, and yep. the media loves that. But he's he's deflecting a lot of that, saying it's not about him. It's not about a coach. It's about what the team's doing. And, what, and he's really created that narrative and, and he's continued to push that barrow. So it's good for the team. And, you know, Appy was, was again, outstanding as well. He seems to be responding and, and have a great relationship with Benji and, um, you know, his influence over, you know, not only the young Polynesian guys in the team, um, but, you know, over the young half as well, they're lucky and, and I would imagine young uh, Fainu, who's, who gets his chance this week off the bench, um, you know, there's no, no better guy to, to to give those young fellas a bit of um, a bit of insight as to, to what it's like to come into first grade with with a bit of hype. Yep. Hopefully and, uh, he doesn't do marriage counselling for them. Sorry. <laughs> I said hopefully he doesn't do marriage counselling for them. I don't get it. Don't worry. We'll we'll explain it later, Glenny. <laughs> right, eh? No worries. We'll, we'll give we'll give you the the romantic history of your fucking hooker. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about. I thought you were talking about. I was talking about Benji. Benji's influence over the young heart. I, that's why I didn't understand what you were saying. Oh, sorry, I thought you were talking there you about go. Benji. There you go. Try and keep up, cunt. Um, I want to give a shout, shout out to Liam as well, who who sent me a message um, during the game. Uh, I believe he's a Tigers fan, and his message was just, Morgan Harper is everything you say he is. <laughs> 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 and ultimately gifted them the field goal at the end. Yeah. So uh, shout, out to, shout out to Morgan Harper, who I believe has got himself dropped this week. Do you know, do you know the other thing that I think is absolutely fucking phenomenal? That... The Eels are so fucking hated that the Tigers were the complete narrative team in this game. The penalty yeah. count was ten to two. Yeah, it was a ten, yeah, ten three, ten three against, wasn't it? Yeah, ten to two. Yeah, yeah, fucking absolutely fucking phenomenal. Well done. Uh, One eyed Tiger. He said, "Gutho deserves this. Glenny deserves this. Everyone deserves this." <laughs> <laughs> uh, James, the West Tigers just ended racism. <laughs> uh, Stuart Kyle Felt thinks about Clint Gutherson's inability to put the stake into the Tigers hard Shane how good's Galvin going to be when he gets to an NRL club where yeah David King Nutho demanding the kick to win and blowing it royally glorious Sam they don't call him Clutch Gutherson for nothing. It's sarcastic. <laughs> Liam, someone hand Caesar some Manscaped clippers. He needs the cue ball treatment. Oh, there you go. Fucking hell. Um, and then the rest of it was pretty much saying fuck you to um, Gutho. Uh, Hayden, to not only back up last week's win with a gutsy defensive win like that against the Eels at Combank Stadium was awesome to see. Hopefully it keeps his momentum moving forward each week, puts these type of performances in as well. Oh, well done. There you go, Glenny. Happy with that? Yep. Beautiful. Right. Let's go on to the games to come Thursday night. The Storms take on the Broncos. And uh, this one's happening down at uh, the Korean Housewife. 
The Storms, welcome back. Munster, uh, Hughes, back from his suspension as well. So let's, look at, let's face it, they're going to be a hopefully much more competent outfit Yeah, for this one. Less purple plotters. Who you got, Glennie? Um, I'll probably have to say the Storm at home. Um, and with with those inclusions, um, they have a very good record down uh, at, at, again. They have a very good record against Brisbane. Period. Yeah. Um, in fact, the first game they'd lost to Brisbane in ages was a qualifying final uh, last year. Um, they and they'd beaten them two, you know, the two regular season games before that as well. Um, but down in down in Melbourne as well, um, the uh, the Storm have won. I think almost almost everything. No, mm. sorry, that's fourteen games. It's eleven three down there. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's an imposing record. And, and now my my new belief in in hoodoos and things like that, um, I think the storm got them covered. Especially, you know, particularly yeah, particularly that Reese Walsh. To, I mean, I don't, I don't think the storm are going to be just dropping the ball for them to score tries like the Cowboys <laughs> did last week. Um, and and really, that that was. Uh, you know, great tactics in the wet, and you know, it's, and it was great that Scott Drinkwater decided to oblige them. But yeah, I just, I, I don't think that's happening with the Storms. No worries. True. Next game. Unless, unless Munster's a total fucking handbrake, like he has, like, like he was. <laughs> I mean, you would think though that the Storm are going to have yeah. a different, different for the better look about them this week. Yeah. Um, dogs take on the Roosters. This one is happening at uh, Sydney Olympic Park. The doggy side. What have we got here? Here's our ins and outs. Oh, Sexy's on the extended bench, but he's not there yet. They're still persisting with Hutchinson and Matt Burton in the halves. And Critter in the centres. Yep. And look, that's they, I don't I don't hate I don't hate that. I mean, I don't necessarily think that Taff is a, is a, is the answer for the, the fullback position for them. But um, yeah, if you got a guy that was like you know an elite centre. It's probably not a bad idea, but that like, you know, that's the thing is the equation. Like, who who do they put in centres? If they if you send, like, does Cherry go to centre? He yeah, I mean, he's waiting to come in. So yeah, that's where he would go. I assume yeah. You know, Kurt Mann team... maybe. <laughs> is, is, is Kurt Mann put Kurt Mann in the seven? Oh, like as an he? as an overall, is the team better with Crichton and fullback and Cherry in the centres than it is with Tafford fullback? Yeah, I don't know. It's a sad indictment on the Bulldogs that you could insert the worst player in the NRL into that seven, and it would probably improve them. Oh, fucking hell! Yeah, and look, this time they've got they got the concussion to Fox last week, so that put Blake Wilson in on take his spot on the wing. Uh, Jacob Preston suffered a broken jaw in that game last week, and uh, Kurt Murray, Murray got suspended. Um, so, and fucking hang on here, are we up to the Roosters yet? Not yet. Uh, okay. No. Okay, because just when we are, let's let's have a look at who's in fucking number eighteen for the Roosters. Yeah, they resurrected the, the corpse using <laughs> the, the powers of dark magic <laughs> and steroids. Weekend at, <laughs> weekend at Jenkos. <laughs> I believe that he was close to to making. Uh, an appearance in the side, like I think round two or something. I thought I saw some um, Roosters friends of mine talking about him potentially uh, slotting in, but uh, obviously didn't end up happening. But yeah, look, he's in the mix, evidently. Returning right next to Bronson Cherry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the uh, it's the it's the the showdown that was fucking born in a fucking Thai juice bar. So, <laughs> <laughs> fucking, um. <sighs> So look, I'm I'm going to favour the the Roosters despite what happened last week. The Bulldogs they, they do have that uh, that inability to score points, and there's nothing they've changed nothing in their lineup. In fact, it's worse through suspension yep. and injury um, than it was last week. So I still think that the, until they figure out what they're going to do about distributing the ball from the halves, I still think it's going to be a, uh, a difficult thing for them to score points. Uh, look, I don't love the Roosters, but you know you can't argue. You know, Teddy's definitely you know back in good mode. Yep. Again, and um, 
and really if they get <laughs> serviceable performances out of their halves um, and they don't get too you know, abused by kick out in defence yep then um, look I expect the Roosters to win yeah that's it Agreed. next up Rabbits taking on the Warriors this one is also happening at Sydney Olympic Park hang on have we got Knights Dragons oh sorry is that oh sorry I missed that one Knights Dragons yes sorry and that one is again not, in not Newcastle. That I'm di- not that I'm dying to fucking talk about it at all. But... No, by all means. Talk about it. Knights. By heaps. <sighs> Legitimately, Knights by 26 points. Minimum. Yeah, I don't... Yeah. I yep. don't it's, it, not that the Knights have been mind-blowingly great to start the season, but I don't think the Dragons get near them. And they're not playing at their fucking lead lined fucking shithole. Yeah. And, like, fucking Flano doesn't have all of the secret fucking mind hacks like he does with Manly. Like, just <laughs> tell, tell, tell these players to whisper, I love you in the ruck. Maybe watch, that's, uh, or maybe, maybe that's what shit. he did. Maybe he seeded all this, like, fucking hypnotic suggestion stuff like that when he was there. <laughs> <laughs> and just like, and just like Manchurian candidated them. No, <laughs> like <he's> Tommy. Just... <laughs> It's just that it after the well, before the the game after the warm up, he just slipped invitations to Diddy's Mansion into all of their lockers. <laughs> yeah, but the ones that but the ones that the ones that had gay people, you know, probably went better than the ones that <laughs> that are actually well, open-minded. Look, that's not surprising. They're probably dying to get to Diddy's Mansion. <laughs> They're the most repressed ones of all. Well, I mean, you know, like the bad yeah. The thing about Diddy's Mansion is, I mean, like the bad thing is, is you know. The, you, know, you you get raped, but but on but you know but there are positives to every situation. I mean, you get to yeah, you, know, you probably get to fucking write a hit song with Usher or um, and, and or Justin Bieber, and he's got all that champagne as well, right? I mean, uh, Josh, you know, you'd have Josh, a good time. Josh Alloway's performance could be described as meek. If you catch my meaning, <laughs> cheek feel. <fill. laughs> yeah, hey, no, that's quite plenty. <laughs> Uh, I feel what we're saying oh that's right yeah they're nice to flog those cunts um, the, the <laughs> rabbits take on the warriors happy um, wedding you fucking pig yeah, yeah happy wedding <laughs> got, you, got you a fucking 50 burger for fucking Kale and Ponga um, now Rabbitohs versus Warriors slightly rejuvenated Rabbitohs versus Warriors Look, honestly, for the Warriors, I think, like, Tamari Martin, he was great for them last year. And as much as, yeah, as, as, you know, as Metcalf, what he offers in attack, I think Tamari Martin is good enough. I think that it's a boost to have Nickel Klukstar in, in at fullback. Yep. And, um, and honestly, I think the Warriors, it just seems to be like Wade Egan. If he's there, they're good. Yes. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. If Wade Egan is there, they're good. If not, they <coughs> suffer fucking dreadfully. So, going from, from, from our discussion last week, Glenny, if you have to, off the top of your head, name the top five hookers in the comp, my my feeling is that Wade Egan now has firmly cemented himself in that in that list. Oh, I it doesn't it doesn't even matter if he is or not. Though I mean, but for this team though, he's yeah. just such a that's he's a, just that's such another a argument piece. altogether. Yeah, right? yeah. To them, yeah. he's... Is is to them he's like number one chips. fucking yeah yeah, yeah that's exactly it, that's what I'm um like he's just so, he's just so important and I mean the way that they were setting up their tries and just the way that um just the way everything was generated from them against the Knights particularly in like the first half yeah like, it's just it's just Wade Egan alone I mean I everything think the comes secret from the secret to the importance of um Wade Egan is it comes from his history he was born in Lithgow. Which is right. Everyone knows is the absolute arsehole of the earth, and he's now playing in New Zealand, which is just left of the arsehole of the earth. So he's a resilient motherfucker, and that level Why does he of get resilience. Injured so much, then? Sorry. Why does he get injured so much? Well, he's, phys- he's physically <laughs> fragile, but he's mentally resilient. Oh, oh okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Yes, so he's yeah. physically he's physically. Oh, that's right. No, that was Ayers where the fucking supermarkets got empty shops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, did you get enough milk or something as a kid? <laughs> <laughs> Ma, 
up. We're gonna get we're gonna get some more milk. I fucking went to the shop. There was none on the shelf. I even tried. I was gonna steal some, but there was none there. <laughs> yeah, I I can't see the rabbits holding it together and controlling the ball long enough to trouble the warriors. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. And uh, and yeah, I mean it, it is an away game for them, and but. I'm still, I'm still favour the Warriors, but look, you know, if Souths play like they did last week, or if they take another step forward from the way they played last week, then this will be a great game. Yeah, Fuck yeah. Like I, ex- game, I expect so. the Warriors to win. Uh, I think the the Rabbitohs took some steps forward last week, but right at the moment, the Warriors are a way better side. Yep. Right, where are we? Mighty Manly Seas Eagles take on the Panthers at a uh, sold out Brookvale Oval. Uh, saw the. Uh, yeah, yesterday or the day before, I saw the saying, listen, it's going to sell out pretty quick. And today, uh, I saw a thing on the social saying that it has sold out, So, which is great. I mean, there's two home games, two sellouts this season. And I know that this not, it's not just unique to Manly, and there are other teams outside of, you know, poorly supported sides like the Sharks. But, like, there are other teams as well that are getting great crowds to their games. Um, I mean, like those games at Combank, you know, like the Tigers game. Was that a sellout the other day? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't. It would have been close. It fucking crap. It was a sell. There was it was a sell the week before, but that mm. might be mainly it sold out. Um, but yeah, this season as a whole, it's weird. It's not like the season immediately after COVID, <laughs> but like it's, it's it's like this season seems to be just like for the game. It's just such a great space at the moment. Like memberships, yeah, are up across the board for every club. Mm. Um, ratings on TV up across the board. Fucking attendances are up, you know. Games are selling, you know, selling out. It's it's good. It's good to see. Okay, now onto the game itself. Um, fuck, they need to get back to the way they were in the first three weeks, and uh, and hopefully commit this uh, last one to a to an aberration. Um, milestone game for for Daly, where he'll become the um, second highest all time appearance record holder. I know they're going to tell you. They're going to tell you out there that it, he's going to he's going to become the all time record holder for the appearances um, as he passes Cliff Lyons. But I mean that's of course uh, eradicating the service of uh, Steve Menzies, uh, which I will not do. And so uh, he's got to play till you know the end of next season to to get beef. Um, Hang on, how is it even up for contention? Isn't it just number of games? Yeah, it is. But I mean, they, they, they say that, you know, even though, even though, you know, Beave never changed clubs, they still take those Northern Eagle ones and they, they subtract those. And I don't know what his manly total, like manly in their own right total was. But I'm um, so like, if you, you know, when you're looking at it that way, then, you know, then like manly in, your own, in, in his own right without having a club change from under you, then Daly will have. Yeah, the, the well, most. look, you know what? So. If we're going to, if we're going to ignore the fucking, you know, Premierships that the St George Illawarra Dragons have never won. You can't go claiming those. No, yeah, it's fine. Okay, we won't claim the premierships that the Northern Eagles won either. Damn. Um, <laughs> look, it this danger danger <laughs> game for Penrith. Um, oh shit! Like look, looking across the park, Penrith have like if you just look at who's matched up against who. Um. Everyone on Penrith is a thousand times the player that anyone on Manly is. The only one that worries me is Ola Kawatu. <laughs> um, this is this is the stuff that the, the listeners didn't have to get at the start of the episode, yeah. and I'm sure that they were thankful for. But they, they did. But they did. Nathan. I'm quite fucking serious. Let, let's look over. Oh yeah, over they it. did. They, okay. they did. <laughs> Isaiah, Isaiah Yo is better than Jake fucking Turbovich. Yeah, Liam mate. Martin is better than the fucking Nobody. Turbo brother that looks like somebody tried to draw Ellen DeGeneres from memory. Um, yeah. James, <laughs> Fisher, James Fisher has. That is hands down the funniest thing you've ever said. It's low bar, but that's fucking funny. <laughs> James Fisher Harris is better than Josh Alloway. Oh, of course, everyone's better than him. Mitch, that's the only advantage Mitch, they've got. Mitch Kenny's better than Croker. No Moses is better than Paseca. No Schneider's way. fucking thousands times better than Cherry Evans. Luai's and that's where you fall down. Toto's better than Polo. May's better than Garrick. Tungo's better than Kola. Taruva's better than Talao. And Edwards is better than Turbo. The yeah, only one so that worries me is Ola Kawhi. So everything, everything you said then was bullshit? No. What side does fucking Schneider defend on? He probably defends on the 
the, the your right, our left, right? So he he's a he's a camper. You get fucking. Uh, well, it's better than being a cooker like fucking. <laughs> oh, mate, fucking Isaac, <laughs> there you know. go. Fucking. <laughs> hey, cash is king. And that's the thing. He may he may be yeah yeah. Oh, cash is king. Fucking <coughs> Isaac. Know. He might be out this week because I tell you when you're putting when you're putting things on social media saying oh you got to go and withdraw your cash from the bank because the fucking government's going to bring in digital ID and 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 he's showing like a wad of fifties on your fucking Instagram stories. Did it look like he was on a train too? It looked like he was on a train. I don't know, but I'm. I mean, I hope. I hope fucking. I hope. I hope one. One four fucking saw his Instagram stories and fucking roll him for his money. And he might be out. I mean, he might. He might be out with a fucking. Yeah, you know, grade three stab. <laughs> <laughs> but um. Wouldn't that be alright? Playing man. Grade three um, missing TNs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. That would just be a full. So I mean, well, that yeah. It could I mean, it could it could affect all three of us. I mean, where we get. Tungo gets stabbed by a Fainu for his money, which which puts him out for the West Tigers this weekend. Can you imagine, like the the NRL fucking integrity committee looking at third party deals with you know, fucking what what what's the value of a, a fresh pair of Entes? <laughs> <laughs> um, look, at, at stages, Penrith's defence has been more brittle than we've been used to over the last couple of years and so with with that the the strength and power that, that Ola Kawatu brings and the ability that he's got to commit multiple defenders and still get an offload on, on that worries me um, but you know if, if this game goes according to plan and Penrith keep their head there shouldn't be anything that stops them from winning comfortably yeah. and, but the other, the other issue is as well is that um, Panthers don't go terribly well in wet weather and there's going to be a biblical fucking Pressure yeah, system over it. Sydney games on Saturday, I, which is I the believe. great equaliser. So, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. And Manly, obviously, great record at Brookvale, great record against the Panthers at Brookvale as well. I mean, it's not like the Storm versus uh, the Broncos in Melbourne, but I mean, it's still like you know they've won two thirds of the games they played there. Yep, uh, against the Panthers. So, look, you know, but just, you're you're in full hoodoo mode, aren't you? Yeah, even if they, even, like, honestly, I mean, like, a win would be great, obviously, in a, in a milestone game, and Daly doesn't really lose um, milestone games, but uh, I'm not sure if he's lost any, and maybe his first one, like, you know, maybe 50 or 100 or something, but certainly nothing since that. Um, but honestly, if they just, just get back to the first three weeks of play, I mean, even though they narrowly went down to the Eels, I mean, that was still, like, a fucking great game, and they still played, you know, pretty well for the most part of that game. Yeah. Um, yeah, and don't don't do fucking get get last week out of the system and fucking don't go back there. Yeah, and take your right take your rightful places uh, as uh, fifty burgers and put the fucking Panthers out. There you go. And do the NRL a favour. The Dolphins take on the West Tigers. This is a big one. Are you going to this one, Glennie? Uh, if my foot is feeling well enough. And... So what, you couldn't you couldn't put a, you, you couldn't you couldn't just fucking sit in one of the. The disabled seats and get a really good spot there. Yeah, the, get a wheelchair, get wheeled in like a fucking seats. king. I'll take you. You get a wheelchair. You hire one. Go to fucking chemist warehouse Mate. and grab one. I'll take you. We can just roll you up Honestly, on that little concrete fucking. One of the best things bit. that ever happened in my life was us cutting down to one show a week. So I only had a very small period of time to endure your bullshit. I'm not going to sit with you at a football game. Thank you for the offer. I, was, I wasn't going to sit with you. I was going to fucking roll you up to the railing and then fuck off and sit with normal people. <laughs> Um, so yes, oh, down I mean, the fucking stairs, young grateful <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rowdy uh, at the end, go and stop resisting, Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my intention is uh, to try and get to this game. Yes. Okay. I mean, like, like, look, if it's just me, but I mean, like, I would have thought that your answer would be fuck yeah, and without not catching it in all these fucking oh, maybes fuck. and possibilies and intentions. Yeah, you're right. Your your intention is not to be a shit fan of the Tigers, but you're not doing very well at that. Mate. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> um, <sighs> tough game. Another step that the Tigers will need to take. Dolphins obviously well coached, um, with some some fair strike power and and pretty disciplined side. Very um, similar sort of. They're very similar sort of side to the Tigers actually. They're not like they're, they're not the most brilliant outfit, but they're. Mm. They they they're hanging hanging in games more. Yeah, that's it. You know what I mean? Interestingly enough, Tigers are fucking two dollar thirty six outsiders. 
Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't put him that far. I wouldn't put him that far outside. And I guess that's just a just a feature of you know the bookies and the algorithms. Put it this not, way: not not dolphins, believing yet. Dolphins are a shorter price favorite than Penrith are against Manly. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean the the gap between the two teams is fucking far closer. Obviously, I mean, I would have thought the Tigers would be Tigers would be heavy favorites over their performances. No, it's because they. It's I, don't because, know. I don't know about heavy favorites. Because these been three in a row. These type, yeah, these type of emotional performances and the amount of three in a row that they've pulled yeah, off over over right. recent history. I think it just gets exponentially harder to chain chain wins like this together. I mean, that was that, that was almost that was the, like a grand final last week for them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the kind of, the kind of outpour. And while I'm sure that Benji's doing his best to sort of you know keep a lid on it, keep him as neutral as he can. This is an away game, an interstate travel game, just a more difficult proposition. I mean, obviously the Dolphins aren't the the most difficult com- you know opposition you could have in that situation. But yeah, you know, I don't think the Titans. I don't think their yeah you know, their progress is not going to be a straight line. Yeah, and I guess that's just the way that people are thinking. Yeah, and I think that's a reasonable assessment. Um, so I think it's a big challenge for the Tigers. I'm interested to see not only how the team goes against you know on the field. I'm interested to see how Benji goes coaching against Bennett and what tricks he might have up his sleeve. Um, but I'm excited to, to see see them compete. And I think the Tigers m- might just squeak out a, a, a close win. Um, hopefully not another fucking one point. Um, I'm not sure I can deal with that two weeks in a row. But, um, yeah, a close, entertaining contest is what I'm hoping for and a Tigers win. Yeah. Look, nice. this, this, it's funny. This is the one that I'm the least confident about the Tigers winning. Out of the last three, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, um, and just because I think, yeah, like their progress is not going to be straight, straight up. There are going to be yeah. setbacks. They're not going to be able to chain them together, you know, forever. But, yeah. um, but look, this is a very, a very winnable. I mean, you got to look. It's a very winnable game for the Tigers. Well, I think they can beat the Dolphins. Um, and I think if if they happen to string three wins together, we've ba- we've got the Dragons next week. I'll you got the Dragons. Points. Yeah, points. so I mean, then, you know, then you're banking points. And if nothing else, you win this one, then you've got the Dragons next week, which is a guaranteed win for you as well. Like, if nothing else, you've banked enough points, the Titans aren't going to get that many fucking points. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah you, good point. And that's it. And the spoon's off the table before fucking April ends. So, yeah, which sort of fucks my whole thing about how difficult it is to win three spoons in a row. Well, maybe it proves my point. Well, well, it pr- it proves it. I mean, if it gets taken off the table in the fucking second month of the competition, yeah. there you go. Like before Origin teams, before before fucking people have even started to taper for Origin selection. Yeah. I mean, come um, on. I, yeah, I will say, I think it probably is very important for the Tigers to win this game um, going into next week against the Dragons, where they should be favoured to win because then we've got Penrith, then Brisbane, so. Um. Yeah, I, uh, I I'm hoping the Tigers can squeak out a win against the Dolph- Dolphins and, and bank some points, as you say. There we go. Right, uh, the uh, the Cowboys take on the Titans up there at the abattoir in uh, Townsville. Cowboys by sixty. Where? Next. <laughs> no, Cowboy, Cowboys yeah. by a lot. Cowboys by like twenty four, something like that. Right? What, what a game yeah. to come back from last week on. Yeah. yeah. Thank, bl- thank you, fucking schedule gods. Blow out yeah. blow out the cobwebs and fine tune a bit of shit and get your confidence back. Yeah. Yep, yep. Hopefully they get a dry a dry afternoon up there on, on Sunday afternoon up in Townsville and uh just uh run through the run through the training, run through the shapes and uh fucking put it on them. And the uh, Raiders take on the Eels. <laughs> this one is in Canberra. I think it's a, I think it's an important one for for Canberra. Um, yeah, hugely. I'm the Arthur's gone with uh, Talangi and and Brown again in the halves. Obviously, Brown's an obvious choice, but uh, yeah. Talangi at six again, interesting choice. Um, I think that's the, that, that's a fine choice. The problem with with the halves last week was that Brown was until until they started trying to get a little bit of a roll there at the end to try and bring it back, like. 
he fucking just abdicated all responsibility in the halves and just didn't do shit. Mm. And that's and I think that's why Gutho had to get so involved as well because someone had to do something yeah. Yeah. to try and make things happen in terms of their attack. And Brown, I mean, is you know when when you're the guy, you got to be the guy, mate. Yep. Um, Bailey Simonson coming back and and uh, replacing Morgan Harper is huge for them. Yes, it is. And um, I, that, I think Canberra. That I think fixes Canberra all have their problems win. defensively. Yeah. I think Canberra have to win and win convincingly with with a solid performance for, across the eighty minutes, just to probably steady the ship a little bit. There's you know a few murmurings. Ricky starting to get a little bit agitated, and and you know some of the performance of the players has been questioned. Um, yeah, it's it's an important one for, for Canberra, and I think as a result of that, they'll step up and win. Yeah, I'm going to favour Canberra narrowly. Correct. Well, thank you. <laughs> I approve of your tip. <laughs> you, you, you approve of you approve of um, of me communicating my yes. opinion. <laughs> yes, yes, that, that is, is your opinion. That I've, is the, I've, that I've, is I've the correct thing to think. <laughs> I've looked into the d- deep recesses of your mind, and yes, can concur. That is what you were thinking. <laughs> All right, oh, that is the correct Feeling way. Least, to think. Signing off. Yeah. Okay. Anything? Oh. Uh, anything else, fellas? Before we pull the pin on this one? Not at all. All right. Not at all. Just mirror, mirror your comments before about how fucking great this season is already. Crowd, yeah. crowd involvement up, memberships up, quality of the games has been fucking great. Oh, it's, Tigers that's are winning. That's probably the worst. That that's probably the worst. The worst part, like the quality of the game. There have been like a lot of a lot of error error ish. You know. Yeah, but there's been an interesting narrative too. around. I said the Tigers yeah, like, are winning. Yeah, no one cares about that, Clint. No, oh, I care about. It. We're talking this about, week, and you're talking this week, about no dolphins. <laughs> hey, hey, this this week you're playing the dolphins. We don't we don't hate the dolphins. Yeah, the dolphins don't have a gutho. No, at all. Ham, Ham is fucking awesome. He is adorable. True. Yeah. The dolphins do have a Tim McIntyre though, and fuck that guy. No. It's the burnt schnitzel versus the fucking the the, the voluptuous, creamy fucking jam roll. <laughs> <laughs> voluptuous if you ever describe food as voluptuous again I will fucking slap you that's not the correct terminology <laughs> no because when you're talking about a fucking when you're talking about a jam sponge roll the word to use is moist Lenny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, alright Spe- that's it see, have you, you seen that your- there's a fucking Sorry? pasta sauce in Australia that's trying to be market, marketed that's pronounced mutti. Yeah, the Italian, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fuck it hell. Isn't, yeah. I'd eat it. <laughs> like, with all the fucking trauma from my youth about the Dolmio grin. <laughs> that's how you get it, by eating mutti. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, I mean, classy to the end. I mean, the thing is, I mean, like, it's like, like it, it, it's, it's, it's like German for 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 mother. I don't know what's going to do with the Italian fucking Italian pasta sauce. sauce. <laughs> yeah, I don't, that I don't know. I'm not sure what the, I'm not sure what the, uh, what the Italian is, but um, uh, the old German and Italian connection runs fucking deep all these years so really, later. <laughs> so German Germans are wearing the dolm, Dolmio grin from eating their mother, <laughs> and then I mean they also come on, each Heinkel, other and, I mean, come down. It's, like, it's time to eat the mutti. <laughs> It's all happening in Germany. It's all happening over there. <laughs> Fucking hell. Efficient trains, though. All right. Let's go. That's it. Yeah, we'll, uh, <laughs> talk, talk it was unnecessary. Go, 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 to, go to your fucking game on the weekend, Glennie. Don't be a shit fan. Fuck you. Me. Tigers fans, hold him accountable. Fuck you guys, too. Limp your ass down fucking Caxton Street <laughs> with your big fucking club foot. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Have you got the gout or something? Oh, this gout! <laughs> that was that was um. He had he had to go to the doctor to get told that it wasn't that. Like he had to hear it that it wasn't that. <laughs> no, he got he got bitten by a brown recluse, and so he's he's got the flesh eating virus on his foot, and he's going to be have a skeleton oh, foot fuck, within days. 
Anyway, the no. listeners don't need another rendition. I'll explain to you when we hit <laughs> no, stop. No, yeah, yeah. That's, when that's, we hit stop. that's the worst thing that could happen to a Toowoomba, being bitten by something brown. <laughs> yeah, and that's full time on this episode. <laughs> Go fuck yourselves. <laughs> See you next week. See ya. Bye.